Welcome to In The Loop from Producer Tech for the latest in music production technology and online learning. In this episode, I'll be paying one of Berlin's producers of Melodic House a visit to talk about production techniques. We'll look at some of the updates to Ableton's push in Live 9.7, as well as check out Sonic Faction's Tricky Traps Max for Live pack, a copy of which we're giving away. There'll also be a quick rundown of Novation Circuit's new sampling features, as well as exclusive offers on courses, free live sets, and more. To start though, this month has seen the launch of our new learning area, the Producer Deck Academy, which brings with it lots of improvements to the way courses can now be viewed. You may have noticed if you recently logged in to the Producer Tech site, now called The Store, that when you chose to view a course, you then linked to a new area with an integrated player and a My Courses option on the menu bar for locating the courses in your account, making it quicker and easier to access the tutorials you need. Totally new to this area is a Browse Courses feature, which now means you can stay in the learning environment while searching for other courses in our library, which can be done by software type, skill or genre, making viewing of the free sample modules easier than ever before. Going to producetech.com forward slash academy or clicking on the academy logo takes you to a useful search page for quickly locating any courses by name. And if you really like a particular tutorial, then you might want to save its URL, which you can then just paste in or double click to route straight back to that lesson, which is another handy new feature. To celebrate the academy launch, we're offering a one-time 50% off code for your next purchase, which is valid until the end of September. Just type ITL E1050 into the coupon code box on the store when checking out to apply the discount. Now let's look at some of the new push features that are on the way in the upcoming Ableton Live update. First up, the new color palette that appeared a while back in Live is now accessible from the hardware. We're holding down Shift and then hitting a Track Select button, a clip in Session View, or a drum pad when playing a drum rack, opens up a color wheel from which your desired hue can be chosen. The ability to define the input and output routing for tracks is now available by going to the individual track mix mode display and then hitting the input and output button, where you then get all of the I.O. controls from the software mixer, so monitoring and all input and output routing options. Note mode for drum racks and simpler slices now gives you more pad performance options, toggled with repeated presses of the layout button, where there's now 16 velocity mode which gives you the 16 pads alongside the grid normally used for loop selection for playing the selected drum or slice at one of 16 velocity values for more precise dynamics control. And choosing a velocity here then allows the selected sound to be sequenced at that level in this or the other layout modes, which is really handy. And there's also a 64 slices or drum pads option where the whole grid can then be used for playing different samples or slices. The main simpler update is a new slicing mode where you can now chop samples up automatically by divisions of the bar rather than just transients, accessed by choosing to slice by beat when in slicing mode. This makes it easier to resequence loops and also create your own interesting rhythmic parts. For example, here's a loop loaded into simpler. But rather than playing it like this in classic mode, I'll go into slicing mode instead and choose beats, and then set it to 16th mode, where every slice is then a 16th note or semiquaver. So we'll replay the whole sample if I hit them really fast one after the other. But what I'm going to do instead is record a 16th note pattern by hitting pads randomly with record quantize on. And then what's really nice in this mode is I can change Simpler's start position or nudge setting to shift all of the slices up and down, which is a really quick way of finding all sorts of different patterns. And unlike transient mode, you can move completely freely through the sample, so slices can start from any point, giving you a lot more freedom to create varied and interesting patterns. And by changing both the beat division and also warp settings, I can get a lot of cool sounds too. Whilst we're on the subject of glitchy and experimental patterns, let's move on to Sonic Faction's Tricky Traps, a great new Max for Live pack, jam-packed with usable instruments and effects, complete with customized control from Push. Tricky Traps is a collection of 16 Max for Live devices that includes instruments, MIDI sequences, and audio effects, all of which sound great and are loads of fun. The goal of the pack is to provide a creative set of tools to allow easy experimentation and some new approaches to music making. 
as well as some more traditional devices, including regular step sequences like foreplay and chord generating arpeggiators like ripcord. There are also some more experimental ones, like circular sequencing radar. And Ripple, which allows placement of triggers and re-triggers on a grid, which send out ripples that trigger whatever notes from the chosen scale that you turn on. Which is a really unique way of creating melodic parts, and is especially fun from Push. Instruments include modular synth drums, tuned percussion, fat bass, and an assortment of quality lead and pad generators as well as one called Glitch Thing, which is perfect for creating crazy, twisted sounds and effects. And the audio effects devices offer a trio of useful modulators, which can be mapped to any parameters in live, for step sequencing or expressively playing with the sounds in your project. And there are of course a bunch of presets, to help show you what the pack can do. So this is a highly recommended collection which offers a wide range of excellent tools that I can definitely see myself using a lot both in the studio and when performing. Stay tuned to find out how to win a copy of Tricky Traps for yourself. Now let's take a quick look at another recent update, this time the Novation Circuit, which we featured in the last episode and is rapidly becoming my favourite bit of hardware of all time. One of the hottest new bits of kit in the last year has been Novation Circuit. Combining onboard synthesising and sampling with a very user-friendly interface, even version 1 circuit proved itself not just to be a fun box for jamming with ideas, but a pretty comprehensive instrument for creating fairly complex arrangements. Although there's a lot you can do with one, I found using two synchronised circuits to be ample for creating epic live sets, in combination with an old X station for jamming extra synth lines, and a Korg Mini Chaos Pad for triggering FX sweeps. But circuit's latest update is definitely going to do away with that last bit of kit, with the version 2 firmware Novation announced importing of samples, which was a pretty sweet update but the sample functionality in version 3 goes way beyond expectations. Whereas previously you were only limited to one sound per drum slot, so four drum sounds in total, you can now play a different sample on any individual step, so 16th note, within each sound, which really opens things up. And every step can also have its own individual automation, to adjust things like pitch, FX levels, or decay, where a longer sample can now also be extended right out and even continue to sound when circuit stops playing, in true one-shot mode. Plus the ability to now back up and organise individual onboard sessions makes using two together much easier, as individual sessions can easily be transferred from one device to the other. For more detailed information on this update, check the Novation website or Circuit Owners Facebook group. If you want to see the hardware in action, then you can check out my Live Circuit Jam on Producer Tech's YouTube channel. And this is with the version 1 firmware, so just the original factory samples. And if you want to keep a copy of it for yourself, then you can download the set from Producer Tech's SoundCloud page for a limited time. Now it's time for this episode's studio visit, which is to house producer Triple XY. Cool. So we're here today in the studio of Triple XY. Hello. Hello. Uh, where should we start? Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into music? The track is Forensics MCR, which is my name at the time, and the track is called First Dynasty. And if you, it's on, it's like a sample to Uru, you know, the Chinese bow thing from a Kung Fu film or something, and then nice. made a dubstep tune from it. It was very simple, but it seemed to do really well. It was very emotional. It was. So there's something that seems to happen with quite a lot of my music is the emotional aspect. When was the transition into house? Yeah, that was it. Once um once Ordinary Things and You Started came out, Ordinary Things was just kind of a housey thing and there was a whole kind of UK funky kind of weird house kind of vibe going on at the time. And 
I really liked playing that tempo and I just, you know, using different stuff that I liked, like Broken Beat and, you know, techno as well and playing that, whereas with dubstep I was kind of confined to this kind of 140 kind of speed. And you were using Ableton already at this stage? Yeah, I, I switched over. Uh, I went on to my friends and he was using Ableton and then he just showed me the basics. The best kind of software is stuff that you don't even have to think about, you know, it's just invisible. Because if I'm writing music in Ableton, it's just, I just now know where everything is and I know that if I want to do something, there's a way to do it. And yeah, and I've just used it ever since, everything. Cool. So this is No Matter Project, this is the track that came out on 10,000 yen recently. The No Matter started with a simple art line that I wrote for the Mini V, uh, the Artoria. STI and it's a very simple hard line with a bit of delay and I wanted to make a kind of fairly emotional long build up to the track and it added a UHU Diva essentially playing the same thing but higher up and it was EQ'd a bit so it's just the top end uh, and then yeah, once I got that going, I was like quite into that. So I kind of write, wrote a kind of electro-y kind of bass line, which was also sent to the Minotaur. Um, let's have a listen. There's a bit of, a little bit of tape saturation from satin on there. So normally it sounds like I made the bass line, wrote in MIDI, sent it to the MIDI tour, and then I've sent that back into my sound card quite hot because there's a little bit, there's quite a bit of distortion from the, from the input there. I've got the focus right sapphire underneath the desk. And if you run it quite, if you run it fairly hot into the sound card, you get some nice kind of distortion from the preamps. Yeah, when also when I finish tracks and we're about to get to the pre-master stage, I will record. Basically the whole balance of this was then sent into onto a brand new tape, recorded and then sent back into the computer for the final pre-master, just to add a little bit of tape distortion. Thank you for coming in. No Don't forget we're now in the last few weeks of our remix comp, where you can rework the freshly squeezed track The Greatest, featuring Marcella Papini and The Rugged Man, to win a Focusrite Scarlet interface, lots of Loopmaster sample packs, and our courses. Full details are on the Produce Tech Facebook page and forum. And here's a closer look at the top prize, which is a really nice compact interface, now in its second generation, featuring two quality combi inputs on the front panel and four outputs on the back, plus MIDI in and out. So it's an ideal spec for a bedroom producer. Plus, it's got a great look and feel to it, based on Focusrite's high-end red range. Also, the second generation release brought with it a totally redesigned driver, so the interface now works in super low latency mode, meaning it's now possible to monitor the audio you're recording through the door, rather than having to monitor the input signal directly before you get there. This makes it way easier when working with hardware too. So jamming with multiple bits of hardware like Circuit into software like Ableton Live can now be done without having to set up the door's track delay function. Finally then, to enter our draw to win a copy of Sonic Faction's Tricky Traps, featured earlier on, simply share this episode on Twitter or Facebook and include at ProducerTech and hashtag in the loop in the message. The winner will be announced in autumn. That's it for this episode. Tune in next time for more tutorials, reviews, giveaways, interviews and other audio-related tomfoolery. This has been In The Loop from Producer Tech. Thanks for watching and see you next time.